Nearly all people are controlled by outer suggestions and not by inner realizations. Ordinarily man thinks only what he sees others do and hears others say. We must all learn so to control the inner life that outside things do not make an impression upon our mentalities. As we are thinking beings and cannot help thinking, we cannot avoid making things happen to us, and what we need to do is so to control our thought processes that our thinking will not depart from the realization of that which is perfect. Man is governed by a mind which casts back to him every thought he thinks. He cannot escape from this and need not try. It would be useless. The laws of mind are simple and easy to understand. The trouble with us has been that we have laid down great obstructions and then have tried to overcome them. Stop trying, stop struggling, begin to be calm, to trust in the higher laws of life. Even though you do not see them, they are still there. Did you ever see the law that causes a plant to grow? Of course you did not, and yet you believe in this hidden law of growth. Why do you believe? Simply because every year, out of the seed time comes a harvest. Shall we not have as great faith in the higher laws of being? To those souls who have dared to believe has come as definite an answer as came to those who believed in receiving a harvest from the planted seed. This law is, and if we would see results we must use it, that is, we must provide the mental receptivity that will prepare us to accept the gift when the spirit makes it. This receiving is a mental process, a process in which we lose all sense of limitation. If you wish to demonstrate prosperity, begin to think and talk about it, and to see it everywhere. Do nothing that contradicts this thought either mentally or physically. The world is full of good, take it and forget all else. Rise above depression and be glad that you are saved from adversity. The human mind needs to be cleansed from the morbid thoughts that bind through its false beliefs. No living soul can demonstrate two things at the same time if one contradicts the other. There is no way except to let go of all that you do not wish to come into your experience and, in mind, take all that you do wish. See, hear, talk about, and read only what you wish, and never again let a negative thought come into your mind. God knows good only, and when we are in line with good, he knows us. When we are out of harmony with good, we say, God has forgotten us. On the one hand, we have an infinite intelligence which has brought us up to where we are today, and having done all that it can for us now lets us alone to discover our own nature. On the other hand, we have the infinite law, which is an activity of God, and we can use it for what we will, only with this provision, that, and so far as we use it for the good of all, are we protected. The law obtains through all nature that as a man sows, so must he reap. Now the Father has brought us to where we can understand life, and we must go as we choose. If we are in harmony with the great forward movement of the Spirit, there is nothing that can hinder our advancement, if we oppose it, somewhere along our pathway it will crush us. As with individuals, so with nations, and so far as they work with a right spirit, they prosper. When they begin to fail in the use of this law, they begin to fall. He who understands will take the position of one who wishes to work in union with the power of good, and to such an one will come all the power that he can conceive of and believe in. His word becomes an expression as the very word of God and he must realize it to be all-powerful. So the one who is truly united with good will wish to express only the truth for all, and in doing so he is working along the lines of the unfoldment of the spirit, and though he may seem to fail from the ordinary standpoint, yet his success is assured, for he is at one with the only ultimate power before which, in time, all else must fall. The Use of the Greater Consciousness I in practice the emancipated soul must always realize that he is in union with the Father. What the Father does, he can do in his own life. What God is, he can become. His word must be spoken with absolute authority. He must know, there should be no uncertainty. The word is the only power. Everything must come from it, and nothing can stand against it. It is the great weapon which he is to use against all evil and for all good. 
It is his shield against all adversity and his sure defense against all seeming limitation. The secret place of the Most High is in his own soul, where God dwells in eternal peace and infinite calm. Here he walks the waters of life undisturbed by the waves and the storm. Divine companionship is his for all eternity. Peace which transcends all human confusion comes, and he realizes that indeed he is honored of the Father. His word is flung out and will work and none can hinder it. The sense of sureness is complete. Heaven and earth may pass away, but the word goes on and on accomplishing the thing for which it was sent, and all power is given to it on earth and in heaven. If he speaks to the sick and they receive, it will heal them. If he says the word of prosperity, it will manifest, and nothing can hinder it. The world will abound with good, and his cup run over with life. What more can we ask? What greater realization of life than to know that God is with us? From this great realization comes peace, a peace which the world little understands, and a calm which is as deep as the infinite sea of love in which he realizes himself to be immersed. Peace brings poise, and the union of these two gives birth to power. No person can hope to arrive while he believes in two powers, only as we rise to the realization of the one end and through all can we attain. When we speak the word there must be no confusion but only that calm reliance which knows that beside me there is none other. Realize that spirit is all causation and that all things are made out of it by the operation of the word through it and that you can speak the word that is one with the spirit and there will be no more confusion. As the Father has inherent life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have inherent life within himself. Speak the word only, and it shall be done. The word is in your own mouth that ye should know it and do it. Stranger on earth, thy home is heaven, pilgrim, thou art the guest of God.